Foundation. That's an organization that aims to improve education and health care in the state of Maryland. It appears some Laurel residents have turned back efforts to locate a strip club in their neighborhood. The owners of the Stardust in this week's 33rd anniversary of Roe vs. Wade. Thousands of today's marchers who would like to see Roe vs. Wade overturned were born years after the Supreme Court's 1973 decision. People on both sides of the issue said this is a week to look at the future of the court. The new Chief Justice Roberts, as well as with the confirmation of Judge Alito looking pretty imminent, it could possibly change the face of the Supreme Court and ultimately look at having a... ...is that many users can't escape and often don't want to. One guy told me today he keeps it on in church and then wonders what to do when it goes off. You send and receive emails. You can scroll up and down. It doubles as a phone. It's a wireless way to keep in touch with the office and for the office to keep in touch with you. Maryland Congressman Chris Van Hollen is like thousands of Capitol Hill workers, BlackBerry dependent. This is kind of a lifeline to the office, certainly. I get my messages on here, I get my calendar on here, I communicate with people on here. It's sort of the all-purpose traveling office. Um, some people call them crackberries because they're an addiction. And, and I happen to fall into that category. My children hate it. Joan Kleiman runs Van Hollen's district office in Rockville, sends and receives email on her BlackBerry when she's on the run, and admits to using the thing, sometimes when she shouldn't, like behind the wheel. <laughs> there should be a law against me. <laughs> there is a patent fight over BlackBerry. The Supreme Court sent it back to a lower court today, and BlackBerry fans worry private users could eventually end up without the service. The president and CEO of the Consumer Electronic Association says don't worry. But the reality is consumers will probably be able to use their BlackBerry for a very long period of time. First, it's so prevalent, it's not going to be stopped. The company suing here has filed literally thousands of patents on the BlackBerry, and they're systematically being thrown out by the patent office. So there's a lot of litigation here. It reflects the fact that there's something wrong with our patent system. But the bla average BlackBerry user probably has nothing to be concerned about. Doesn't it just annoy you when you're supposed to do something and they use it? Anyway, um, the company that's bringing the lawsuit here is a patent holding company in Northern Virginia. The decision could be made by a judge in Richmond. And Bruce, uh, if the decision goes the way that BlackBerry users don't want it to go, there are, they hate to admit it, other products. I was going to say, we don't lose the technology, right? If it's not a BlackBerry, somebody else will step in, fill the void, already doing that, right? Yeah, there are a number of products out there, but people who use this thing are just... Right. Addicted to it. We get the point. Okay. Thanks, Gary. <laughs> Coming up next, why lawmakers in Virginia are thinking about putting the lights out on some youth sporting events. Also ahead, fallen star, major job cuts, facilities closing their doors. Now the future of Ford hangs in the balance. Our toddler's future looks brighter thanks to the help of some inventive teams. You're watching Nine News Tonight. Well, the storm that went through was all rain for us here at home, but in the northeast, there was some snow. They had seven or eight inches of snow in the suburbs of Boston. The storm is now pulling away up there as well. But uh, if you're a snowbird, the northeast was the place for you last night and early this morning. Again, for us, it was all rain. We had about an inch of rain in most locations. Now it's gone. Partly cloudy skies expected for the rest of tonight. You can call it chilly. Low temperatures dropped between 28 and 35 degrees. Nice day coming up tomorrow. Partly to mostly sunny skies. A southwest wind will push the temperature up close to 50 degrees again, but a big change is coming. A strong cold front's going to move through here Tuesday night, and that's going to bring a quick shot of Arctic air. High temperatures expected only in the 30s on Wednesday and Thursday. And during the day on Wednesday, the winds will be gusting over 30 miles per hour, so it'll feel like it's in the teens and 20s, and there could be some snow flurries. We're not talking about accumulating snow, just snow flurries during the day on Wednesday, and then it'll warm up very quickly. By Friday and Saturday, the highs will be back up close to 50 degrees, and that's been the story the whole winter. You know, okay. a couple quick shots of cold air, and... That's it. Some snow, but nothing to worry about. Nothing to be concerned about. Yeah. All right. Tony, thanks a lot. Okay. Now we've got to look at some of the other stories making headlines across the country tonight. Senators on Capitol Hill want to know why 2006 has proven to be a deadly year for the mining industry. A Senate subcommittee grilled government coal industry and mining officials asking about stiffer fines and penalties for mine violations and about better equipment for miners. 14 miners have died in accidents in West Virginia this month alone. President Bush says he's doing just what Congress authorized him to do. Speaking today in Kansas, the president said he's allowed to protect Americans from terrorist attacks. And he insists that's what he's doing when he authorizes eavesdropping on some phone calls in and out of this country. 
Ford's announced its turnaround plan today. The plan called the Way Forward leaves many workers behind. It cuts nearly 30,000 jobs at 14 facilities by 2012. Ford says the cuts are necessary to help reverse a $1.6 billion loss last year in its North American operations. Child's play or public nuisance. Virginia is now considering a law to cut back on when and where youth sports leagues can play. But some athletic enthusiasts say that's a bad call. Here's Stacey Cohen with the story. My son's the fourth one back there. She's a soccer mom if ever there was one. They look intense. They're serious. They're very serious. That's a good one right there. That's Andrew. Alice Riley's Haymarket home is stacked with soccer pictures featuring her two sons. And this was seventh grade this year. Her 12-year-old's room is piled with trophies, a testament to the family's love of the sport. It's a big learning experience for everybody. I mean, winning is fun and losing isn't, but you have to, <laughs> you can't quit. But on outdoor fields like this one, the state could very well tell kids to quit playing. When Bishop Ireton School in Alexandria built this new field a few years ago, neighbors felt overrun by around-the-clock sports events. If we have company, we don't have any place for them to park. So Fairfax County Delegate Robert Hull introduced a bill to limit sports events on fields near houses. No play after 6 p.m. on weekdays and no games at all on Sundays. I would definitely support nothing on Sunday because I like to have at least one day of peace and quiet. And these were just from last season. Riley says the bill would put many leagues out of business. Some teams play only on Sundays. And she can't imagine telling her son Andrew that his soccer days are over. But if it did, it would be very devastating to the to our whole family and to a lot, a lot of people, thousands and thousands of people. Granted, I knew there was a school across the street when I moved in, and I won't argue with that, but I expected to have some free time, you know, when I could call the space in front of my house mine. Delegate Hull did not return our calls for comment. He has said publicly, however, that he doesn't even support the bill. He introduced it as a service to his constituents. Hmm. Is, is there some compromise here? Or, or what do you think? Maybe placing a limit on a field-by-field -field basis, saying, right, okay, right. And, and they've done that to some extent. Ireton worked out deals with neighbors saying, okay, we won't play so often on Sundays and we'll try to keep it to a minimum. But, right. you know, a, a statewide thing is going to be uh, pretty tough for, yeah. for many folks. So this is a good one. This is one people talk about. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Stacey. Coming up next. It's a baby walker custom made for this little guy. But what's most amazing about it is who made it. I'm Peggy Fox in Springfield. I'll have the story coming up. This is Nine News Tonight. Teachers quit. They say state pensions are just not good enough. So they've headed to other states in search of better retirement benefits. Now state lawmakers are looking for ways to try and keep them around. But Democrats in the General Assembly say if there's any increase, it'll be small because bigger benefits are not part of the governor's budget. Everyone seems to agree Metro needs money and they need it fast. But when it comes to providing a dedicated funding source for the transit system, it appears no one wants to make the first move. Today, the D.C. Council decided to wait and see whether Maryland and Virginia will pledge to help. And D.C. Councilman Jack Evans says it's unlikely that either jurisdiction will step up to the plate this year. 13 really is an unlucky number here in the D.C. area, at least when it comes to gas prices. AAA says gas prices around here have jumped 13 cents in the past month alone. So now it costs $2.39 on average for a gallon of self-serve regular. Kind of makes you wish for the good old days of last year when it was just a buck 86. A Springfield toddler born with a major disability and unable to walk is now able to move and spin with the press of a button. He uses a fancy custom-made baby walker. As Peggy Fox tells us, it wasn't some high-tech company that built it, but a group of bright teenagers. Oh, 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 oh. I'm sorry. Rahim Ula is 19 months old, strong-willed, smart, and determined to feed himself. But it's tough given a condition which left him with partially formed arms and a few stubby fingers. He may never learn to walk since his partially formed legs don't work either. But now he can move thanks to this custom-made robotic baby walker. Silly boy. It's powered with a motorcycle battery and has two motors and a microchip. Its program and the whole device was designed and made by high school students. These motors are really powerful. They're really forced. They have created a lot of force. And they are really silent. 
The project came as a request to Chantilly High School's Robotics Academy through volunteer engineer and class mentor Jerry Skeen. I thought it was a great opportunity. We had some concerns at first how complicated the thing huh. could be, and um, but we all decided that we just couldn't say no. Within three weeks, the students had the walker built and equipped with sensors which stop it near stairs to keep Raheem safe. It felt good doing it as opposed to just building something because I felt like it. On the surface, the students have given Raheem mobility. But the baby walker has also opened up Raheem's mother's eyes, which will give Raheem endless possibilities for his future. When that mother saw that child, uh, driving around in this in this uh, baby walker, her whole aspect, her whole view of what this child could grow up to be changed in that instant. They're really, really intelligent. They're really great. But this taught them a whole other lesson, that they can use the skills that they're learning in robotics and engineering and science to, to make the world a better place. And they did. And they did. They absolutely did. Peggy Fox, 9 News. The class has an ongoing partnership with the ULA family and has promised to make repairs and upgrades as Raheem grows. While no money has been exchanged thus far, it's been a win-win situation for both the family and the students. The search is on. We are currently experiencing delays between... Looking for the new voice...